I am the seed, I am the seed that, grows that grows and advances, and advances the kingdom, kingdom for soul winning. winning. This word, word bread of life, that I receive today, today is not only for me, but to be shared with others, with others that, they that they may grow, may grow in, Christ, in Christ as well as myself, as well as myself for, the for the purpose of successful living. Thank you. I want to welcome you in. We're here at 33 Market Point Drive in Greenville at our satellite campus and also to the mother campus, those that are joining us, and of course to the virtual campus and all of our global connections. We're going to kind of have, you know, I don't know if you want to call it FaceTime, but we're going to have a conversation this morning. We have been in Galatians 5 and 1 pretty much all year. It says, stand fast in the liberty where with Christ. Now, real quick, <clears throat> most people can't stand in liberty because they don't see their value in Christ. Because in Christ, you have to see value through faith and communion, relationship, and fellowship. In life, we kind of see life through things and situations and people. So when he says stand fast in the liberty, if we get our spirit free, now watch this, if we get our spirit free and not perfect, we can grow. If we're trying to be perfect, we can't grow. Ask me, how does that work? If you are trying to be perfect and you have a problem, you focus on the problem. You don't focus on getting better. Yes, and if you think you're perfect, there's nowhere to go. So, but if you understand that it is a process and a transition in my life, now you were free even though you failed. But because you really didn't fail if you learn how to get better. Does that make sense? So we need to see failure as just a step. So it goes to say, stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ has set you free. Be not again, section C and D, again entangled. So we're going to, we're, we're going to the word again. Be entangled with the yoke of bondage. Yoke and bondage and entanglement are three words. Yoke, well, first of all, entangled, yoke, and bondage are three key words. And the reason being, and some people have asked over time and throughout the nation, why, what about the anthem? First of all, you have to see yourself as a growing product, not as a finished product, as a growing product. There are certain phases of your life where you're young, you're energetic, you have toys, then you go to another part of adolescence, then you get into high school, then you get into college, and then you get into young adulthood, and then you get into adulthood, and then you get into middle age, and all these different phases. Some people's minds are still in high school. Some people's behavior is still adolescent. Even though they should be in category six, they are in category two. So when it says, I am the seed, you have to see yourself as producing something that grows and advances. First of all, why does it say the kingdom? Well, number one, he says, seek ye first the kingdom. So if I align with God, then my will and my purpose and my direction has to align with God, even in the midst of all the mistakes and stumbling blocks that I have. But when we look at yokes and bondage, now the next part is natural and spiritual, and then we're going to dabble into business leadership and management. Because if you're going to be a leader, you can't talk like the employees and expect to lead people because the employees got every reason just to do nothing. And so that's one thing people, so for the writers are talking about business, part of being leadership is always dealing with contrast and conflict. It's always dealing with contrast and conflict. That's what you get paid for. So then it says, so I, I saw this article that was sent to me, and it says, your environment shapes who you become. Your environment. So this scripture comes out of Proverbs 27 and 17 when it says, iron sharpens iron. Now, the first part that I say uh, the summaration from it comes and say people can improve each other through interaction. 
Now, that goes two ways. It says people can improve each other through interaction. I want to ask you a question. How many people are doling your blade? You say anybody who's not moving forward? But do you know our best comfort zone of the average person is the person who agrees with us and not challenge us? It's the person who talk, uh, our high school friend, our high school buddy, our work buddy, the person who talk about what was or a person that talks about what is. We have very few friends who talk about what can be. So there are actually interactions. Let's say you can be an A student, but if you're talking to people who don't study, what who you who do you think is going to influence who? It's going to influence you because you're going to see the moment more important than the future. So so here's what it says: people can improve each other through interaction. It says it's the people you surround yourself. So we have to start doing between now and um, New Year's and New Year's resolutions and all of that. The people you surround yourself with will mirror reflections of your potential and limitations. There are people in life and in family that will dole your opportunities and your gifts. I, I know a guy was talking, his family was talking about mailing something and taking it up there. And so he fell into the trap. And then he realized, why should I mail something when I can scan it and email? But because of the people he were talking to, they want to fold things up, write them out, or it's like having a typewriter versus having a laptop. If the typewriter evolved into a laptop, how are you still trying to do things that are 30 years outdated? There are some people in our circle that we surround ourselves with that create limitations because they take us back and don't prepare us to spring forward. And the problem is we're comfortable with that. My environment makes me comfortable. Do you think you can grow in a comfortable environment? Excellent. Why would you move if you're comfortable? But now here's the opposite question. Then why do you struggle with embracing what will move you versus what will make you comfortable? Afraid of change? Afraid of the unknown? It requires work. Okay, it requires work. Now this goes back to life and work. So we can go to work and do eight hours, but we can't spend three hours working on ourselves. Does that make sense? We can go to work and give someone 10 hours and they tell us what to do. They blow a whistle, we know when to start. They blow a whistle, we know when to break. They blow a whistle, we know when to go back. They blow a whistle and it doesn't even tell you what it is. You just automatically know. So they dole the communication and put you into a system that keeps you the same so now when you leave whatever occupation you have, you have been doled down all day. So now how do you work on you? If you were, if you were a, let's say a 75, and you go into a place and it makes you a, a 25, and you go home and it makes you a 15, how do you get to 85? You can't? So this is why it's important. 
The people you surround yourself will mirror the reflection of your potential or limitation. If you spend time with five confident people, what do you think will happen? So can you name five confident people in your mind that you can stick around, that just their company will pick you up even when you don't have to say a word? Think about it. Am I making sense? It, it, it says, the, one of the first things it says, if you spend time with five confident people, you will inevitably become the sixth. Your company can change your mindset. It can encourage you, and they're confident, and they can pull you to another level. The question is, do you want to be consistent with the opportunity of your growth? Does this make sense? All right, now, the next one is surround yourself with five intelligent minds. What, what is the common thing? It's, it's, it's an old saying, small minds talk about people. Small minds think alike. But great minds... Y'all can, can Google it. But see, here, here's, surround yourself with five intelligent people. And you'll be the next to elevate your intellect. I think one of the things that we have to realize when we talk about comfort zone is comfort zones create anxiety when it's, when your future doesn't reflect your present. Many people's future does not reflect their present. And so it becomes a point of germination that you have to peel back some things in order to get to the next level in your life. It's like a rocket booster. As it goes up in the atmosphere, there are sections of it that have to come apart. So what I'm saying, and hold your thought, is that some people can get you to the third grade, but you got to have a fourth grade teacher that can get you to the fifth grade. And some people are still trying to hang out with people who are able to get them to point B in their life, but they don't truly have the capacity to take you through all of the alphabets. So I think we resist environmental change and culture change. Yes. Okay, so so this is in the, this one. Surround yourself. So as you look at what do I want to do and where I want to be in 2025, who are you going to surround yourself with? Because the question I would have, how far and how much have we grown in our comfort zone? It says, says walk with five millionaires, and you're on the path to wealth becomes clear for you to be number six. If you walk around, if you if we stay around people who talk about a situation, it'll rub off on us. If we get around people who work on solving situations, we'll move into action. That action will spill over into our personal and our professional development. So does anybody think, and you don't have to say anything, do you think you've reached your maximum potential? Okay, so so then why do we stagnate our growth? But see, that's what happens. But the reverse is also true. Stay in the company of five fools, and you all had mentioned that, and foolishness will follow. Foolishness rarely differs. Foolishness rarely differs because what happens is if you have friends and they skip, they skip school, guess what you start doing? The cool stuff, many times, is not the productive stuff. 
so let's let's I think that kind of hit it, it so and that's a problem stepping out of the group and finding your new group because your new group will not be your comfort zone they don't speak your language they don't talk about what was they don't talk about how we from the other side of the tracks if you're from the, if then why are you on this side then? If that side was so great, it, I often say, who took neighbor out of the neighborhood? So it's almost like, I don't know, I don't know how to say it. It's almost like dysfunction becomes the popular thing. The more crazier things that we can do, the more things that cause chaos. Not, not making it the best community and the best environment. It doesn't matter what size, what shape. You should have, and there should be people in that community that wants their values. Yeah, but I'm, I want to ask a question. How much have Cool paid anybody? Anybody get a check from Cool? cool? Has Cool sent anybody a check? Has Cool promoted anybody? Well, here's my whole point. Is it long-term sustainable success? No. Or is it immediate gratification? It's immediate gratification. So you got to make a decision. Put up the little slide that I sent you. You, you have to, you, you, you have to, you have to see yourself bigger than the moment. Look at this slide. It's a slide where the gentleman is looking up and it's like he's praying for bread and someone from heaven sends him a hoe. Because everything in his environment has either either been handed to him, it's been cool, he doesn't want to struggle for it, he doesn't think he has to put forth an effort for it. So what's your thought? Yes, you're right. The best thing, because it was free, it had no seed, it was just dropped off, and only, and, and even they abused that privilege. He said, just take enough for today and come, oh, I ain't going to come back tomorrow, I'm going to just go ahead and just fill up my buggy and, and get this and do. Why do we always try to dial down things rather than follow the process? <laughs> that's not the answer we were looking for but I get it I mean see because it's the reversal it's just like him as long as someone's giving to me and as long as my environment is petting and comforting me I can't deal with reality I can't deal with the pain of growth but if it's in you you want to get old and think about all the things you could have done and if you don't, if you don't put something together now, here's the thing. When I say it naturally and spiritually, here's the thing: most people don't talk about. Today, you can have no health issues, and tomorrow, your knees, arms, back is just as stiff, or your mind can't remember. It doesn't give you a notice when it starts. Yes, it doesn't. It doesn't give you the I'm coming. So I mean, think about it. Think about it. So if I'm not preparing for my next, what am I doing? Now here's the thing: the reversal. Stay in the company of five fools, and foolishness will follow. How many? How how much influence have people had over us that we have quit our assignment? We didn't stick to our New Year's resolution. Our monthly rather, we left our saving plan. What do we say? We got to walk every other day. I'm going to juice in the morning.
I mean, and that's that's just like the manner, because I think I've accomplished it rather than advanced. So here's the thing: surround yourself with five toxic individuals, and their negativity will poison your mindset. Because human nature on the natural side is more into what pleases them than what makes them better. Let's say there are 12 steps on a totem pole. They get to step three and they think there's enough. But they make bills for step 15. But they don't have step 15 kind of pay. How many people have gotten in trouble financially because someone told them they could when they didn't have the behavior or the basic principles to do it? That's a toxic individual. A toxic individual is an individual who does not care about your spiritual growth. No, I'm, I'm being honest. A toxic individual is a person who resists coming and growing spiritually. Because the Bible has said that a fool has said there is no God. So when do you, how do you plan to go to heaven and live for eternity and can't spend 30 minutes with God a week? Think about it. Can't spend 30 minutes with God a week. Yes, you're right. There's this cool party. and We're going here. and We're going to go do this. And we're going to brunch. You can go everywhere else. But when they box you up, your body's left on earth, but your spirit has to go somewhere. Think about it. So toxic people don't want to grow spiritually. Toxic people are all about the moment. And they will influence your mind. I'm quite sure this gentleman, and it is the slide that we had. The gentleman was looking up for bread, and someone out of heaven gives them a, a, a rake, a hoe, and say, "Hey, you know, why don't you plant something?" Let me get something. I'm going to say this to you. We got about five minutes together. You are in charge of your life. It goes back to Galatians five and one: Stand fast in the liberty. You have to get control of your present in order to build your future. Here is the slip up. Most people think their associations are just casual. They are powerful. Work, people, life situations have a powerful impact on you. Sons, daughters, grandchildren, Sisters, brothers, aunts, uncles have a huge impact on you. And the majority of that impact is not positive. It's almost planting a toxic bag in your mind that now you sip on. It's the same thing Jesus told Peter. He said, Satan has desired to sift you. He doesn't want to overthrow you. He just want to sift you, and if he sifts you today, he may give you three days, three weeks off, and he comes back and he sifts you again. And eventually, he has stolen your time, and when he's stolen your time, he's stolen your potential and your future. Now, we don't look at him and blame him. Who do we look at and blame? God. A new promotion is coming up, but they got requirements. Well, why not just promote me because I believe I deserve to get it? There's probably 99 other people in the room that believe that they deserve to get that promotion. How have you positioned yourself? So don't think associations are casual. We are so used to negativity that it becomes the norm. And when someone says something or tries to do something positive, it's like positivity is a cancer. I'd rather be over here doing the cool stuff. Yeah, doing that cool stuff, playing games all day. Lights get cut out. 
So I, I, what I'm saying, and one of the things I want to do is, and we're almost at the end. We are, we're almost there. Your circle will either build you or break you down. Our environment will either build us and understand the difference between your substance and your potential. Potential has no foundation. You can have the height, you can have the width, but not the desire. If you have the substance, which means you're putting in the work. If you're putting in the work and not just talking, not the bathroom talk, not the water cool talk, not just the talking down the hall. It's like society likes to hear itself talk, but it's not productive. How many people will stand on the job and talk and there's supposed to be X amount of products that's supposed to be produced, and at the end of the day, you didn't meet your number, but you was there for the same amount of hours? Does it, am I making sense? Your circle will either build you or break you down. It says, choose wisely. Here's the kicker for everyone, because there's no class on, on Wednesday that's right before Thanksgiving and people are going to be preparing and traveling. Here's the model. Be intentional about who you follow or who you allow in your space. Be intentional. We have now people who try to be influencers and really, I don't mean this disrespectfully to anybody, but they're living in a trash can. But because they can tap into somebody's internet and put on some clothes or, or do something or say something and get you to listen for three seconds, I need more than three seconds to learn. What test can you pass in three seconds? What certifications can you get in three seconds? And so there's a battle in the human mind right now that if I, I, if I can't get it like this, I don't want it. And that's a trap. You got to spend time to learn. You got to spend time to grow. You got to spend time to develop. One of the downsides of social media is it want to think you make you think you there already. And because, some, but because 500 people like what I said, don't mean that it was right. Because those 500 people could have been toxic. Be intentional. This is why the vision board is so critical in people's life. Put it on your refrigerator. Put it in your bathroom every morning. Because you have to, and this is going to, and I hope this makes sense. You have to fight to stay positive. You have to fight. Negativity, you don't have to do nothing. Stupid, just, you just wake up and send you some kind of, I just, I just, I don't want to do nothing today. The first is right around the corner. I have to go and do emotional shopping <laughs> or comfort eating. Well, now you said it. You're right. Be intentional about who you allow in your space. And if you take this to heart, there's probably going to be a group of people that you're going to have to dissolve over time because they can't grow you. And that's the problem I have with people who want to skip church and don't want to be involved and always got something negative. Why don't you, say, why don't you talk about why you don't go? Because 99% of why you talk about you don't go is because you don't want to go. But you don't never find fault at the club where they're shooting and killing and fighting and, and all the negative stuff. You don't find any kind of issue with that because that's your comfort zone. And it never hits home until it hits your children or your grandchildren. I told people in the group, I said, it, you feel safe because you think your money can keep you safe, but there are things that will happen that your money can't fix. When you allow people to dehumanize you, it's by allowing them to play games in your mind. That's the beginning of deep, and words are very powerful to weigh on you, to, de to dehumanize you. Your shape, your size, your color, your texture, your gifts, your ability, your shortcomings, 
That's part of being human. But what somebody want to do is they want to tag you to the wall so they can get ahead of you. Am I making sense? Your job is not your safety valve. I've already seen articles where there are groups that want to come in and lay off two-thirds of the workforce already. Between automation and outsourcing, correct me if I'm wrong, anybody want to say nothing now? Technology, AI. And so here's the thing. When I say de dehumanize, is they want you to think you don't have the capacity to do something other than what you're doing. And the problem is most people are too comfortable right now. That's why I said our environment. You have to become uncomfortable to grow. So here's, here's the thing. This is, this is right at the conclusion. Guess who your future depends on? I want you to consider taking charge of your future. Less talk, more input into action in your life. Your future depends on you. Remember, who you walk with determines who you end, where you end up. Who you walk with. If you hang out with those who just want to be cool and they all into the moment, if you want to hang out with the guy that thinks, you know, I'm looking for manna from heaven, somebody do something for me. If you walk with, oh, my job's going to be here, they got new contracts. Just because they got new contracts, don't mean that facility is going to be doing those contracts because your company will build something somewhere else in a third world country and have people working for 50 cents a week and put 85% automation in it. And you'll be gone by spring. Oh, yes. Even in the fast food industry, they have now automated uh, drive throughs So who, you are the only one that can secure your future. Now I'm going to say this, and this is not on this, and I just got one sentence to say, so I got two to say. How can you play a game and you don't even know the rules? Did that hit? How can you play a game and you don't even know the rules? And if you don't know the rules, how can you stand a chance to win? And this whole ministry, House of Reconciliation, is about you winning. But it's not about keeping you the same. Yes. Yes, he's used, used to using his feet and basketball players. And usually this ministry is about shaking you up. So everybody want to get on the bus when it's cold outside. But I need you to own the bus. Am I? Everybody want to get on the bus. Oh, man, the bus. Let's get on the bus. Let's get on the bus, man. Let's get on the bus. Let's get on the bus. Hey, I need you to own the bus. Not get on the bus. But if you own it, then you can determine where the bus is going. If you own your life, you can own your future. If you own your failures, you can own your opportunities. Last but not least, be smart. Choose growth over comfort. Wisdom over mediocrity and positivity over toxicity. That, did I get that word right, baby? Toxicity. I don't care. Well, all you had to say was say it. You smiling like I won. See how people set you up? <laughs> See how people set you up? No, but I don't mind being corrected. If it's the right thing, growth over comfort, wisdom over mediocrity, and positivity over what? Toxicity. Okay, that, that, as long as we get it right. Because I know somebody, oh my God, you just tore up the word, Bob. You just tore it up again. I just, I just can't listen to him. 
but I'm the kind of person that I own it. Does that make sense? Did I help you this morning? Now let's say the church anthem and we're gonna we and think about it. I am the seed, I am the seed that, grows that grows and advances, and advances the, kingdom the kingdom for soul winning. For soul winning. This, word, this word, bread of life, bread of life that, I today, that I received today is not only for me, but to be shared with others that they may grow in Christ as well as myself. For what? Be intentional. God bless you. I'll see you soon.